here for you with 6 News at 11. Music, food, and history ring in 30 years of Juneteenth celebrations in Lansing. And it is our top story tonight at 11. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sherry Jones. And I'm Siobhan Klepfer. Lawmakers and community groups join celebrations in Michigan and around the country today, marking the Juneteenth holiday weekend. Organizers say it's been a work of passion to keep years of events true to the history and meaning of the day when enslaved people in the United States learned of their freedom. Josh Sanchez is here for you now tonight with more. Josh. Sherry Siobhan, while the Lansing Juneteenth Committee has decades of experience recognizing the day, the holiday has a history spanning more than 100 years around the U.S. And that story began more than a thousand miles away in Texas during the Civil War. In Dallas, the only known original copy of the historic Juneteenth General Order is on display. On June 19, 1865, U.S. troops arrived in Galveston Bay, Texas, with the news of the presidential decree that freed enslaved people. Since then, recognition of the milestone has been growing. Tonight, Lansing continued that legacy with its 30th annual Juneteenth celebration. It's symbolic of freedom, and you know, for so long, our history as African Americans has been hidden. It's hidden from the textbooks, uh, and so to see an authentic uh, celebration of this history means so much for so many people. State Representative Sarah Anthony joined other state and city leaders in kicking off three days of celebration at an event tonight at Lansing Community College. <laughs> this gathering came hours after Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed the Crown Act, a bill sponsored by Representative Anthony, which outlaws discrimination of natural hairstyles and texture. No more, not here in Michigan. It's something that we've been working on since 2019. Literally the freedom to actually show up as your authentic self. That push for representation was echoed by Michigan Supreme Court Justice Kyra Harris Bolden, the first black woman to serve on the bench. It's really hard to be what you cannot see, mm -hmm. but once you see it, you can achieve it. And so just being a representation uh, to somebody, you never know how that will change the trajectory of their life. The night also recognized the next generation of leaders. Nine student essays were selected by the Juneteenth Education Committee, each awardee sharing some $1,700 in scholarships and prizes. For Okemos High School graduate Kennedy Perkins, the biggest honor was sharing the stage with state leaders and hearing their stories firsthand. Express it, I, it really pushes me to be great and one day maybe be that for someone else, the um, inspiration and representation for another young girl that looks like me one day. So. Tomorrow night, organizers are hosting the first night of Juneteenth Freedom Festival at St. Joseph Park in Lansing. That will be followed Saturday with a 5K and parade around the West Side neighborhood. Sherry, Siobhan. Thank you.